The reptile hobby often encompasses amphibians too, frogs, newts, salamanders, things like that, but what are the worst ones and their better alternatives? Today we're going over the top five worst amphibians for beginners and the five that actually make great pets. My name's Adam, this is Diamond, you're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles, stick around. Now, being that this is an amphibian video, I can't have an amphibian co-host because you can't really hold frogs. It's frowned upon to do that. So instead, we've got Diamond, who is a reptile. Basically, amphibians, they encompass newts, frogs, salamanders. That's generally the three main groups that are very common, but we're gonna go really heavy on frogs here. Starting off with number five, a frog you've probably never heard of, the purple frog. Why is it called that? Well, because it looks like this. They are purple. Imagine Muck the Pokemon was a frog. Well, this is basically what you'd get. Purple frogs are very scarce in captivity and they're scarce in the wild too. They come from parts of India where they are endangered. And although we found their tadpoles many moons ago, they weren't even formally described until 2003. So that should tell you everything you need to know about how easily they are found. Not only that, but even if you could keep them in captivity, they're kind of boring because like they're underground almost always, except for like two weeks of the year. So most of the year they're underground. They're kind of like, imagine a sand boa, but less exciting in amphibian form, harder to take care of, more fragile, more expensive, almost impossible to find. This is a terrible comparison. I'm trying to paint a picture of why you would want this frog instead. This is one of the best frogs you can keep in captivity. This is a white's tree frog, or otherwise known as a dumpy tree frog, or Diamond, where are you going? Come on, come back here. Or just like an Australian tree frog. They're pretty big. They're one of the bigger tree frogs in the entire world. So if you like frogs that are, well, big, this is the right frog for you. White tree frogs are actually really easy to take care of in captivity. They are kind of one of the ones that is more handleable, although I wouldn't call them handleable because we shouldn't hold frogs. Their skin is porous and they can take in oils and detergents and things like that from us. But I just mean that they are kind of easily picked up. They might try to bite your fingers, but who cares? Their teeth don't hurt. Like it feels like nothing basically. And just in general, they're big enough that they're not super fragile. So if you're taking them out to put them in a new enclosure, to clean, to whatever, I think they're just safer for most people. Not only are they just safe for you, because frogs aren't dangerous to you, but also uh, you're safe to them because they're more robust than smaller frogs. And because of their big size, you can see them in the enclosure pretty easily. And also they turn purple at night when they hunt sometimes. My guy Muck, that's what his name is actually because he turns purple at night. And he, uh, well, he looks like a purple blob. There are much better pets and these are arboreal. So white tree frogs are pretty, pretty awesome. Number four, Indian bullfrogs. Yeah, these things with their big purple cheeky mouthy throaty things. There's a probably a proper term for it. These guys are very unique. They look kind of like nothing else in terms of just the way that they display those colors but they're very similar to other types of frogs. Now these are from India also and some other parts of Asia, but they're kind of difficult to find also. They're considered of least concern, which means that they are not endangered. It is kind of the lowest form of endangerment, meaning they're not endangered basically. <laughs> anyway, now that I'm not distracted by Diamond trying to jump at the enclosure there. Uh, they're not endangered, but that might be changing soon just because, well, they have habitat loss issues like so many other species on the planet, but uh, these guys are difficult to find in captivity, which is what matters to you. Not only that, but they're expensive, they're hard to breed, and I think we're becoming part of the problem if we import them in. So for many reasons, pixie frogs or African bullfrogs are a better option, but actually they are bigger. African bullfrogs are monsters and they've got an amazing call. The way that they sound when they call is kind of, well, it's like the typical bullfrog type of sound, which is awesome. Also, they look a little bit more drab, let's say, than an Indian bullfrog, but their size and the dark green and just their pattern on their skin, I still think makes them very beautiful and they are 
big. Did I say that, that they are big? Not only that, but they are super easy to take care of and we know a lot about them because we've been keeping them in captivity forever, which means we're not gonna have too many issues with, well, I didn't know that and now I've got a dead frog. You've got lots of resources to know how to take care of one of these. Oh, and watching them eat? <laughs> They are monsters, they're crazy. African bullfrogs are wickedly underrated. If you're looking for an animal that is pretty easy to take care of, you don't really need to handle all that much, you don't care if it doesn't move that much, but feeding it is your main thing. Feeding these guys is more fun than feeding basically everything else. They're monsters. Number three in what is most likely my... Stop it. Number three in probably my favorite frog on the list. Ow. This dude, he's brutal. He thinks everything shiny is food, including the back of my head. Okay, number three, my favorite frog on the list, Malaysian horn frogs. Now they're called horn frogs because they look like they've got horns, but they're not. They're just kind of projections over their eyes. It's a camouflage technique to make them look more like leaf litter so that they blend in. Camouflage is a pretty common thing. We don't really need to go over it. I think that just because they are so unique looking and there are many species of frog that look similar, but these guys just look most leafy and they're big. Whee! All right, new co-host time. This is Littlefoot. Let's just carry on here. Malayan or Malaysian horn frogs, they go by both terms. They get like five, five and a half inches if they're female. Males are smaller, so super easy to take care of in terms of sexing them. I don't know how why that's to do with taking care of. It's easy to sex them is what I'm trying to say here. Now the main issue with these guys is because they like a super high humidity like most frogs do, 70, 80 percent, but they like a really low temperature, we're talking like lower than 75, it might be difficult to deal with the ventilation because they need a really good ventilation. Kind of like how chameleons need more ventilation than other reptiles, these guys need more ventilation than other frogs. Not only that, but they're expensive. They're a little bit difficult to breed because they are a larger frog and they have those kind of horny things on them. You need a little bit of a taller enclosure because they will kind of rub off if they're in an enclosure that's too short. So for all of those reasons, if you want something kind of similar looking, I would probably tell you to go and get a Brazilian horn frog or a Brazilian Pac-Man frog they're sometimes called, or just make your life easier and go with a Pac-Man frog. Sure, they look a little bit less similar, but they're a lot easier to find, and they're cheap, and there's more morphs, and they're easier to take care of, and you can have them at a hotter temperature, 75 to 85, which is kind of like perfect. So I just think they're so easy. Of all frogs, Pac-Man frogs might be the easiest ever to take care of. And that's just simply because a Pac-Man frog needs that temperature. Their humidity is pretty easy if you have a substrate that will hold that type of humidity. They're terrestrial. You don't really need a giant water dish. Just fill up the water dish that's big enough for them to get in every day. That's kind of it and give them bugs. They're very simple. They're very hardy and they are very beautiful also. Pac-Man frogs, they get the love they deserve, but I think that and as far as amphibians go, they're sometimes overlooked. And I think that these guys are pretty cool. Although you might see a Malaysian horned frog soon because when I go get all the enclosure, oh, that's supposed to be a secret. Hit subscribe because next week you're gonna freak out when you see what I just bought. Number two, Vietnamese mossy frogs. Now we talked a little bit about camouflage earlier, these are the kings of camouflage. You will not see them in the enclosure unless you've got a very keen eye or you have a very bare enclosure, which I do not recommend. Vietnamese mossy frogs come from, well, you guessed it, Vietnam, like kind of higher elevation. That's where you're gonna find them. They need it very humid, obviously. I mean, well, I guess maybe it's not obvious, but they kind of, I don't know, when I look at these guys, they look like moss and moss needs it to be humid, so. But anyway, it's true. They do need it to be humid like moss would because mossy tree frogs. The reason that they're on this list of worst for beginners is just they're, you can't really see them in the enclosure, so visually they're not that fun unless you catch them moving, but they're pretty shy. They're not gonna come out very often. They spend most of their time just kind of stuck to whatever they're camouflaging to, so, uh, and they're a little bit delicate. I think a better option would be an Amazon milk frog. These are unbelievably cool amphibians. They're amazing. Amazon milk frogs are, they kind of look like pandas a bit. They're a similar size 
and they are just a little bit easier to take care of. Now, they're not super common, but I would suggest that these are one of the easier frogs to keep in captivity at all, especially being that they are a medium-sized frog, I'll call them, and they eat so readily, and they're so visible in their enclosure, I just think that they make a better option. Now, it should be noted, all of these animals on this list, I'm not saying that they're bad pets, I'm just saying for a beginner frog keeper, there's better options. But you can do your research and actually keep all of these animals really well. So don't not get something just because some bald idiot said so in a top five list. Do your research no matter what you get. Even if it's on this list, research the crap out of it before you actually get it. Now, like the Vietnamese mossy frog, Amazon mill frogs, you can keep in groups. They would do really well in groups. You want something like what's behind me here, like an 18 by 18 by 24 exoterra, something like that, or zoom it, it doesn't matter what enclosure, a glass enclosure that is taller than it is long or wide because they are arboreal. I think they're awesome. I will definitely have these in my collection eventually. Like, I keep saying that about everything. Am I gonna have a zoo soon? Am I? Anyway, stunning to look at and super easy, usually with reptiles and amphibians, sometimes anyway. The cooler looking they are, the harder they are to take care of. Well, that's not the case with these guys. They are very simple and awesome pets. Okay, number one, the most ridiculous looking monstrosity of a frog that you might have never heard of, the hairy frog or horror frog or the other million names that describe this thing that looks like this thing. Nothing else looks like this. Now, why is it called a hairy frog? Well, these aren't actually hairs. They're made of the same sort of thing that the skin is made out of. And there's a lot of, uh, I guess, guesses or hypotheses of why they do this, why they grow this hairy-like thing out of their back, their, you know, kind of armpits, basically. They look like they got super hairy armpits, basically. Anyway, what is thought, or most commonly thought, is just simply that, well, they need extra oxygen, and this helps trap extra oxygen through their skin, as amphibians sometimes can do that, take an oxygen through their skin. Now, another really creepy thing about these crazy frogs is just simply that, um, well, instead of having claws made of like a keratin, they will break their toe bones and then project them through their skin and use those as claws for defense. That is so metal. And then when they're done, they will just kind of like heal what they just did to themselves. So they're Wolverine, basically. Okay, so here's why you don't want them or probably not anyway, if you're a beginner. They're difficult to find, they are expensive, and they don't do super great in captivity. They're very uncommon, and because of that, these frogs, which are from Central Africa, by the way, and hunted for food, mostly in Cameroon, where they're from, they are, there's just not a lot known about them, so it's hard to take care of because you don't really know what you're doing unless you know what you're doing, but how would you know what you're doing if you're a beginner to frogs in the first place? Okay, so we call this an amphibian list, so there has to be something besides a frog on it, right? Well, I'm gonna suggest getting a Spanish rib newt instead. No, they don't really look the same, and in fact, a hairy frog is terrestrial where these are fully aquatic salamanders, or newts actually. So why would I suggest this? Well, the newts, Spanish rib newts, the reason they're called rib newts is because they do something similar to the hairy frog. They will break their ribs and project those through their skin as a defense mechanism. That's pretty cool. Maybe not as cool as a hairy frog, but still pretty cool. Not only that, but they're kind of simple to take care of. A lot of people put them in paludariums. In fact, the, I showed a little bit of those Amazon milk frogs at a reptile shop really close to me. They have an paludarium and in the water portion, they're Spanish rib newts. So that's kind of cool, like two for one. Or if you want something that's similar to a Spanish rib newt, but just more common, there's axolotls too. But anyway, where this is getting away from us here, I wanna say thank you. If you took the time to watch this video, to hit the like and hit the subscribe button, leave a comment, all of those things cost you nothing but a few seconds of your time, but they help this channel more than you could possibly understand. So thank you. And a special thank you to the Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. You guys are gonna be the first ones to know about this ridiculous purchase that I just made, which is going to fill just, you gotta stay tuned for this. For as little as a dollar a month, you get extra content, you get extra discounts on the merch, things like that. And, um, well, I think that's it for this week, right? Because we do videos twice a week. That means I'll see you on Thursday. Or no, today's Thursday, so it'll be Monday. See you on Monday.